Hey everyone, welcome to me reacting to Spongebob Conspiracy number 7, the Robot Invasion Theory. I think that's what it's called. Uh, I don't know, the title isn't really locked in my brain, but I know it's some somewhere along those lines. But uh, yeah, this is the invasion theory about like robots, and I'm assuming that obviously, you know, the theory is probably going to be a hoax or something. It's going to be about the muse and all that. To be honest, I have a feeling I, I do know where this horror plot is going, and I think I know the message. So, if you haven't seen the theory analysis video, uh, where basically uh, Inside of Mind did a video on Alex Bale and the Spongebob conspiracy theories, and basically talked about how there's like a muse and all that, and how the whole thing is about feeding this muse and all that and i'm assuming that by the end of this theory like by the end of this sort of like conspiracy theories thing the muse will show itself and i'm assuming it's going to consume alex bale himself basically like symbolizing saying the mu the muse consumed him sort of like that's basically i think what the symbolism is here but honestly it's really cool honestly to see a conspiracy theory series have an actual story ra like is is really interesting rather than just being theories like that's really interesting honestly i, I like it a lot but uh, yeah anyways guys we're reading some description make scrub the alex bale thing so let's, let's, let's just get right into it all right all right so i admit it some of my theories have been a little crazy lately i mean goofy goober alien death cult theory so oh, yeah dead mother theory let's maybe try and slow down a bit on this okay one. There is a secret robot invasion happening in Bikini Bottom. Everyone well, that's slowing it down, right? That is society. true, though. There are robots. Replacing people with robot cyborgs, waiting for their chance to rise Ooh. up and start the robot apocalypse. This is not a joke. I repeat, the robots are coming. The robots are coming. This is the robot invasion Ooh. theory. Okay, I like that. That intro. Ah, okay. So this is like the story, I assume. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Swings are kind of scary, you know? They are utilized in horror. Alex. Oh. Sorry, what? Ah, okay, so they're going next. I assume that they're gonna be the ones that yeah, get eaten sorry. by the muse. I've just got a lot of my mind lately. How's the, uh, Spongebob theorizing going? Because it was the cat. It's good, it's good. Um, I'm actually thinking about maybe stopping. Why? They're huge. Yeah, I mean, people watch them. It's just, I didn't go to film school for three years just to make SpongeBob theories forever. Yeah, and I do like that message too. Like, I relate with that a lot. Because I'm an editor. It's easy for you to. And you know, reaction videos aren't film school, and you're already editing commercials. Yeah, but I didn't go to film school. I would say commercials either. It's just something I'm doing for now. I like SpongeBob theories. Actually, that's the same thing here. <laughs> I'm an editor, and know, for now, I'm just doing this. These videos also just, they, they take a lot to make. Not sure if I'm up for it anymore. Dude, up for it? You're just like watching cartoons all day. They're gonna die. <laughs> they're going, they are literally going to die. I, I am calling it. it just, they're gonna get eaten by the muse. Yeah, so it's like eating him inside. And then eventually, like, yeah. So there's like, he's getting eaten by it, essentially. But inside. Over a year now. Uh, definitely did not think that I'd still be making these a, a year later. But it's all worth it, right? Because you guys love them, and I love making them, and they're they're super easy to make. Uh, uh, the sponsor. Time to talk about today's sponsor. <laughs> okay. Do you like intense, action-packed mobile games? Epic rosters with hundreds of characters to play and bosses to fight. Well, then you'll love wine from Bright Cellars. You know, after a long hmm. day of SpongeBob theorizing, was that Rage Shadow Legends? Nice cold wine. Here's the thing. Mm. I don't know if I should. I normally Rage. cut sponsors out, but Here's usually when I do. I don't really know anything Wait. about wine. 
That's why it's good. Bright Sellers has got my back. Bright Sellers is the monthly yeah. subscription service. Yeah. Usually when I do, I always cut out sponsors, sponsors but the last time I did, it was about the Muse. And I'm assuming this is also fake, maybe? Educational cards that tell you how to best serve it or what to pair it with. Maybe not. I don't know. I I, I probably shouldn't cut out the sponsors because I think they are story related. Very good. Very good. I think they are story related, so I don't want to cut this out. Kind of reminds me of the the peach cobbler my mom used to make me as a kid. Right at two moment there. here. They always know. They always know. A little bit of a little bit of apricots too. Kind of like the first kiss I ever had at the Sadie Hawkins dance. Apricot lipstick. How what? Did, how did you know that, Bright Sellers? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it is story related. Oh my god. Orange blossoms. Good thing I didn't cut my this out. Gam used to call me her little orange blossom. How did you know that, Bright Sellers? How did you know that? Bright Sellers is offering Ooh. off your first box. Yeah, I'm not cutting this. Okay, I, I shouldn't cut out the sponsors. I honestly love that idea, though. Integra integrating the sponsors into the story. Okay. No kids. No kids. Wines for adults. Adults like me. <laughs> also is that. The yeah, screen, parody. But I think that's that really cool. My wine, I will begin the theory. I'm assuming that's like a fa- that's like a- Something that he made, a website he made, maybe? I assume. One of my favorite episodes of Spongebob is the season three episode If that is a real sponsor, that is cool Spongebob if he integrated it into the story, though. Get super paranoid about but it could be just, like, the whole, like, Happy Meat rats. Farms thing. What? Isn't that what it's called? You think oh, yeah. This episode. We don't think we know. Oh, yeah, this it's episode. Funny episode but it's funny. I can't help but wonder if Spongebob's fears might be a bit Ooh. more justified than we thought. I forgot about that episode. In the episode SB129, we get our first glimpse of the future. There were robots. 2,000 years later. Yeah, there were. Okay, uh, what's going on here? Why is everything chrome? chrome? Everything, everything is chrome, chrome in, in the future. future. We see a world yeah. covered in chrome where everyone has been replaced with robotic people. Spongebob? That's true. Spongebob? I am SpongeTron. And this isn't the only time we see mm, future Yeah, before. I forgot about that. In season 7 episode, Back to the Past, SpongeBob time travels to an alternate future where Man Ray takes over, and once again, people have been replaced by robots. And then, in the second SpongeBob movie, Sponge Out of Water, there's a deleted scene where SpongeBob and Plankton go to the future and see this. We did it! I wonder when we are. Excuse me, sir. Do you know what year this is? Ah, cyborgs! Oh! We didn't go back in time. We went front in time. And there's even foreshadowing in episodes that take place in the present. Oh! In the Krusty Krab training video, we hear this. Well, luckily for you, Mr. Krab's fear of robot overlords keeps oh. the balance of technology in check. And an insecurity guard. For, didn't know that. That's interesting. Also, the I evolution of SpongeBob eventually getting taken over by robots. Okay, so there seems oh. to be a lot of evidence for the future. Of yeah, like that. Interesting. But kind of interesting. Honestly, it actually does seem like it's going to happen. This matter. I mean, robots ruling the world is a pretty common depiction of the future in lots of different media. Well, yeah. And even if this is the canonical future of the show, it's at the very least thousands of years in the future. Yeah, so true. It's not like we can already see this robot invasion happening in present-day Bikini Bottom, right? Well, wait. Why Here's would they have an interesting question about SpongeBob? Why would they have that model though? There. Why are there so many robots in the show? And I'm not talking well, about Sandy are. or Plankton's inventions. It makes sense for them to have robots since they're both genius inventors. But why do hospitals and office buildings and amusement parks and Weenie Hut Juniors and many, the many Hut Junior. places have such advanced robots? I mean, let's ignore the fact yeah, that Weenie Hut Junior and robots wouldn't really make sense down here. But Kidney Bottom isn't like a super advanced society, right? You wouldn't really say that they have much futuristic technology, <laughs> except when it comes to robots. But why? And what's even stranger is that there are many, many instances where these robots suddenly turn evil. The first time there really are, yes, was Tunnel Glove. Yeah, that is the Tunnel clip. Glove. SpongeBob and Pearl get that literally was the clip. Boat ride that's full of animatronics. Patrick tries to set them free by breaking into the control room, but accidentally causes all the animatronics to suddenly turn evil and attack SpongeBob. <laughs> Now, 
This is a pretty basic cartoon trope. Well, Someone yeah. accidentally breaks the controls, then the robot malfunctions and turns evil. This isn't really all that weird for SpongeBob. Except, what's strange about this is that Patrick doesn't break any controls. He hits a button labeled animatronic override, and that's what causes oh, the robot Oh, danger, to turn do not evil. push. I'll just gingerly lean on this wall. Huh? They aren't malfunctioning. The robots were intentionally designed Ooh. to have a button that makes sense. Yeah, that is true. But why? Then <laughs> I'm the saying that too much, I think. Cooper discovers a flyer for a home security system that's oh, yeah, it is. free, despite it clearly And then he destroys the things. city, right? After he sets it up, his house suddenly grows arms and legs to a robot to yeah. bikini bottom. Wow, Squidward's house is destroying the neighborhood. Now, to be fair, this was a malfunction caused by Spongebob, but why would a simple home security system have giant arms and legs? I mean, the malfunction didn't create them, they were clearly already installed. They yeah, you're right. They managed to stop the house, but what's really creepy about this is that we can still see signs of Squidward's house being sentient. Oh, yeah. I, I think those are just gags, though, but cleaners, yeah, that is Spongebob true. And Patrick go to an office building and encounter a trash cleaning robot. The robot immediately attacks them for causing a mess. <laughs> I mean, I guess it makes sense. Oh, my rump is roasting! But this time, there's no malfunction that causes this. It's working exactly as intended. Not only does that the is true. Robot have a buzzsaw and a literal laser cannon, but it also turns all of the nearby machines into killer robots to help hunt down Spongebob oh. and Patrick. So where are all these places? Okay, yeah, no, that's that's even. I haven't seen that episode, so being programmed to suddenly I'm assuming that's one of the most recent ones. That stumped me for a while until I watched the season 11 episode My, My Leg. leg? This is the episode I haven't seen this one either, but I definitely heard about it. actual conspiracy theory here and not just cartoon antics. Because it was funny. It's time we finally find out. That that image by the way, I know where that's from. I think that's from the Christmas special that was stop motion. It all oh. Yeah, the muse. Uh, uh, uh. Giant tentacle mon Oh yeah, isn't it just a cow? I think that's what the the thing is. It's a it's a cow, right? Hey, um, I'm still serious about you leaving this house. It's not that I don't appreciate everything you've done for me. It's just I think we want very different things. The camera. No, I, don't, I don't want it to come to this, but I will. I will use force if I have to. So you, you better go. I'm assuming he can't kill it. It's an unkillable thing. Oh, and his friends are here to die. I'm assuming. I'm assuming that's where this is going. The episode, my leg. But yeah, here we go. Back into the theory. I do like how instead of it just being like an end credits thing. They're like it's actually integrated At between the, the like segments, which is really cool. A robot that works there. It's just a small throwaway gag. The robot never turns evil or does anything strange. Don't take my leg. Don't take my leg. But there's something awfully familiar about the robot's design. Let's go all the way back to the season three episode Plankton's Army, which opens with Plankton trying to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula with a robot disguise. Never know what trick he'll use to steal me secret crap. Isn't a baby? Formula. What a quaint restaurant. I think I will sample their wares. These robots have an uncanny similarity. Right that is, the ooh. same time. Okay, but maybe we could just chalk this up to the showrunners being lazy and reusing assets. But SpongeBob True. has always had a pretty diverse amount of robot designs throughout the show. Oh and yeah, the banana peeler. The direct copy paste or the either. coconut they crack. They the effort Not to cracker. redesign the face and colors, but it was still clearly based on Plankton's robot. So here's my theory. Plankton has built many robots to try and steal the Krabby Patty secret formula, but I think after he fails to do so, he doesn't just throw them away. He redesigns the robots and then gives them to different businesses. Or sells them, yes. With the intention to one day use them. Hey, I mean, that's how he could still probably run enough. his restaurant, honestly. I mean, you know what Plankton really wants isn't the secret formula, it's to rule the world. I'm shilling oh, my robots as NFTs. No, yeah. Sorry. Using an army of robots. Oh, so, yeah, that can, yeah, same, Battle for Bikini Bottom. Bottom. Plankton's character, but we're gonna need a lot I apologize, I just had to. The one behind all the that just made this video insanely dated, by the way. 
In the season three episode, yeah. No Weenies Allowed, we see a robot working at a place called Weenie Hut Juniors. Would you care for another diet cola with a lemon twist, Weenie? And while it doesn't resemble any of the <laughs> robots we've seen Plankton make, does that voice sound familiar to you? Would you care for another diet cola with a lemon twist? What a quaint restaurant. Oh! Oh! Yeah, no, that's... Like this is the default robot voice we hear in SpongeBob. Hmm. There are many different voices the show has used for hmm. robot characters. What a quaint yeah. Greetings, I am Robo 2.1. Yeah, so they're... Detected. This is very uncomfortable. Leave my father alone! But here, they specifically recreated the voice from Plankton's robot. Let's go back to Glover That. Oh, yeah, that is true. Room, we see a machine on the wall that looks shockingly like SpongeBob. So much so that Patrick even mistakes him for it. We know Plankton has built a SpongeBob robot before in Welcome to the Oh, yes, it could be that. Inside of Glove World. In Krusty Cleaners, Maybe. the trash robot also has a striking resemblance to Plankton's robot in the season 9 episode Eek and Urchin. That was in an the Urchin, season yeah. Five episode, the Patty Gadget, Squidward tries to get SpongeBob. Oh, that was a short, right? It Wasn't that a short? It creates Krabby Patties for free, but it's never explained where Squidward got this machine. Now, it doesn't resemble anything we've seen Plankton make, but a staple in a lot of Plankton's inventions is having them resemble his likeness especially with one eye in the middle and that's exactly what we see with the patty mm. and the patties it makes are terrible which would make sense for something plankton made in the episode all that glitters spongebob buys a super advanced talking spatula oh yeah and then but in plankton the takes it over spatula, right we find out plankton has a whole collection of advanced spatulas just like this one and even tries to trick spongebob into taking a talking spatula it seems like no matter where we turn we can find a connection between the technology and Bikini Bottom and Plankton. But if you remember in those glimpses of the future, the world isn't just ruled by robots. They've actually replaced all the existing citizens with robot copies. Yeah. And believe it or not, this is also something we can already see happening in Bikini Bottom today. Get ready to see Ooh. how far this robot invasion has really gone. Or the story, yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey, Victoria, what are you, uh, what are you, what are you doing here? Um, yeah. I was just around She's gonna get eaten. By... So I'm assuming in the next theory it's gonna be the other person. Uh, inside? Inside? Uh, no, no, no. It's just, it's not a good time right now. Um, in all honesty, it kind of seems like you're going through something. I just wanted to check in on you. Uh, yeah, she's I dead. She is so I'm dead. Fine. You know, uh, it's just the, the SpongeBob stuff has been keeping me really busy. I'm a little stressed about that. And, um, but I'm, I'm fine. You should, you should probably go. You're being really weird. You're not answering your phone you're living in total darkness can you just talk to me what's going on okay, he doesn't want to see the muse just just not here fine do you want to get coffee or something sure fine yeah um uh i gotta put something away just stay right here oh Now, we know Plankton has tried to turn people into robots before. SpongeBob, come in here! Oh, yeah. <laughs> or should I say Robot Bob? But he gave up after SpongeBob was too annoying. <laughs> You've got to take that yellow nightmare back! It's not worth it! But I don't think this was his only attempt. In the season 11 episode, The Checkup, SpongeBob and Squidward are trying to give Mr. Krabs a health checkup by testing his pinching reflexes. Okay, I brought plenty of things for Mr. Krabs to pinch. A uh, pinch of salt. And one of the things they have him pinch is a baby. A baby's cheek. <laughs> Lucky that was a robot baby. Hmm, some random baby just turned out to be a robot. Yeah, what? Never explained why. That's weird even for Spongebob, but things get even more interesting when we go back to Season 9 in the episode Plankton's Pet, where Plankton tries to steal a Krabby Patty using the exact same purple baby as a robot disguise. Oh, yeah! That diabolical fiend! I can't believe this is working! And we're not even done yet. If we go even further back to the Season 5 episode, Goo Goo Gas, Goo -goo -gas. we can actually see the exact moment where Plankton gets the idea to turn the baby into a robot. Why, you're so tiny and helpless, I could take your formula whenever I wanted to, and you couldn't do a thing about it. <laughs> That's it! Well, finally victory will be mine! Now, in the episode, it's implied that this is just him getting the idea to turn everyone into babies to steal the formula, but isn't it crazy how it Yeah, the baby, though, is the same. The baby fish I mean, it could be just reusing designs, though. Episodes? Now, there's another fish who's always been very suspicious to me. The strangely realistic news anchor fish. Ooh. All of the 
Bikini Bottom is a buzz over the identity of a mysterious He could be the, the, a robot. One of those like wall fish. In a show full of cartoon characters, why is he the only realistic one? In fact, I made a whole theory about how there are evolved cartoony fish that can talk and primitive realistic fish who can't. But as many people have pointed out, the one exception to this is the realistic news anchor fish. Well, oh! If you ask me, he looks a lot like one of those animatronic singing fish you buy in a gift shop. Because I think he is. He's, he's supposed to be. His mouth and how we only ever see one side of him. So, already a pretty strong indication that he might be a robot, but there's also something familiar about his voice. What kind of cruel, careless, evil person? I'll canvas all the seediest low- <laughs> Oh, it is! Right. It literally he has is! The same voice as Plankton. And if you're gonna take over- It the literally world, you're is! definitely gonna want to control the media. But how exactly is Plankton replacing- the I, I just made that well, parallel. Like the season 10 episode, Whirly Brain. That's interesting. Clue. In this episode, that is very interesting. Extremely popular in Bikini Bottom, the Whirly Brain. Oh yeah. and watch your brain soar under the beat into the air. Yeah, it's it's a weird episode. It's a so weird episode, yeah. Actually, voluntarily attaching devices to their brains and ripping them out of their bodies, and no one thinks that this is suspicious. If you ask me, this seems like the perfect way to replace someone with a robot. Remember, in Welcome to the True, Bucket, Plankton told us how he turns people into robots. I'll be forced to remove, remove your, your brain, brain and yeah. it in my robot chef by removing their brains. But is there any proof that he's the one behind the Whirly Brain toys? Let's take a look at the new Spongebob. Bob prequel, The Patrick Star Show. Every once in a while, the oh, show is a, a stop-motion parody of Frankenstein with Plankton, and he actually uses whirly brains to conduct his experiments. It's not super clear how this all connects to the main show. I mean, we do see Patrick interact with the stop-motion Plankton at some point, so they're at least in the same universe, but regardless, it's still a solid connection. Yeah. See, another head-based gadget in the season 11 episode, Bottle Burglars, an invisible helmet being advertised in a magazine for only 99 cents. And in the same episode, we see Plankton using the exact Exact same helmet. Crabs will never see oh. Helen in visuals. Now, maybe this is just implying that he bought the helmet from the magazine, but that doesn't really line up with what we know about Plankton as an inventor. Plus, I can't see them selling a tiny version of the helmet just for Plankton. That's true! It's more likely that Plankton created the helmet and is selling them to the people of Bikini Bottom, possibly as a way to create... Yeah, helmets. maybe. All right, maybe. So we're starting I don't really... I haven't seen the episode, so I don't know if that scene comes after the magazine is shown or before. Because if it's after, then maybe, but if it's before, then maybe not. And it's not some random background character either. It's one of the main characters in SpongeBob. Isn't it Karen? This final part of the robot invasion theory Isn't it is Karen? going to completely change the way you look at the entire show. Are you ready? Because this is the Patrick Star theory. What? What? Wait. What? Patrick's a robot. The cat's name was Gary. Goes to the front door, she's gone. Shit. Victoria? 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 Yeah. That image is perfect. Now, I fully realize saying Patrick is a robot is a very bold claim. Yeah. But hold your judgments till the end. By far, the most requested theory I get on this channel is to cover Patrick Starr, and more specifically, his inconsistent intelligence. Throughout the entire that is story, true. there are these little moments where Patrick- Oh, just inconsistent writing? <laughs> I'm a bit more or gags. Than that. The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. And then immediately goes back to being dumb. Oh yeah. There's so many examples of this happening that many people have actually made their own theories about it. Is Patrick secretly a genius and just pretending to be dumb? Does he have a secret split personality? I diagnosed Patrick Star with trauma. Oh yeah, the theorizer. I've Spartan seen a couple of those videos. Multi-intellectual DID with additional paranoid schizophrenic delusions of a mental multiverse. Uh, uh maybe, but I've <laughs> come to a bit of a different conclusion. Have you ever noticed how every time we see Patrick try to think, there's either sparks or smoke coming out of his head? Isn't there a visual? There's a visual though too, where it's like gears, right? 
faking again. And Isn't there a visual where it's gears? Head, it's represented with gears or something. <laughs> kind of yeah. Yeah, and then a plug. And then doesn't he become smarter? Now, we're supposed to assume that this is just a cartoony way to visualize thoughts, but what's strange is just how consistent they are with it. And even stranger, none of the other characters' thoughts are visualized this way. Yeah, that one's definitely a gag. Swiftlord's happy gland is forced to take shelter in the recesses of his mind. It's only Patrick who seems to have this profound yeah. association with him. And just look at how detailed they are with it. While Patrick's head is sparking in a rule of dumb, if you look closely, you can see a spring pop out of him and even a hole left behind by the spring. Uh, that is such a small what? Detail that no one would notice unless you were going frame by frame. And if this is just supposed to be a metaphor inside of Patrick's head, how come SpongeBob clearly sees the spring come out? Okay, okay. So he does entertain the idea for a moment that Patrick might be some sort of robot. How would he have gotten converted? And why does this cause him to randomly become smart every once in a while? That time? word converted. Well, I looked at all the scenes where Patrick suddenly does something smart, and I noticed a bit of a pattern. There are two different types of these moments. There are times when we think he's saying something intelligent. Wait, SpongeBob! Bob. We're not cavemen! We, we have technology! But then it's revealed he's not actually being smart. Yeah. This doesn't contradict his character at all. Patrick is someone who doesn't see himself as dumb, so there's lots of times when he tries to be smart, but he fails. Dumb people are always blissfully unaware of how dumb they really are. Yeah. But there are also moments where he actually does do something undeniably smart. Oh yeah, I've seen this! They might be onto something! We could filter the CO2 through our ballast tanks, refire the engines, and ride the shark yeah. wave out of here. Wow. He's right! But then he immediately acts oblivious to the fact that he was being smart. We're going through with your plan, Patrick! Yay! What plan? So, I kept track of yeah. these two different types of moments, and it seems like after season three is when he suddenly switches from pretending to be smart to actually having these smart moments. And this switch perfectly lines up with the season four episode, Patrick's Smarty Pants. In this episode, Patrick falls off a cliff and gets his head knocked off. SpongeBob accidentally replaces his head with some brain coral, which makes him become a genius. I find all this laughter to be highly illogical. In the end, they switch back to his normal head and Patrick goes back to his usual stupid self. But take a closer look at the scene when he first puts on the brain coral. Here's your head. Isn't it like... Now, many people have interpreted these gears with cobwebs as a metaphor for Patrick's brain never being used until now, but these gears are not from Patrick's brain. His brain came off during the fall, which means these gears are entirely from the brain coral. And at the end of the episode, when they remove the brain coral, we can- There's a plug, the yeah! <laughs> yeah! We are no longer seeing a Wait. metaphorical representation inside of someone's That means head. the coral is a robot? Inside perspective. The brain coral is just like the Whirly Brains, a robotic device that plugs into your brain to control you. Isn't it convenient that Patrick just happened to land next to a pile of coral that looked identical to his head? Is it possible that Plankton saw this as an opportunity to add another victim to his robot invasion? But after Patrick removed it, he went back to normal, right? He completely stopped Plankton's plan, right? Well, one season later, in the episode Sing a Song of Patrick, Patrick attempts to use his brain again, and we see the exact same gears inside of his head. Come on, you stupid brain! Yeah! Work. The creators went out of their way to recreate the exact placement of all the gears from the brain coral. Yeah. Which means the head Patrick put on at the end of Patrick's Smarty Pants was not his head. It was another piece of robotic brain coral. But it seems like for whatever reason, this brain coral isn't as effective as the first one. And he's only able to have rare moments of genius. Oh, in yeah. The oh, episode, yeah. SpongeBob's big birthday blowout. Patrick has another one of his smart moments. Oh, would you look at the hour? It's almost time for me to take SpongeBob on a tour so you guys can take house but this moment in particular is very interesting because plankton is actually there to witness it and take a guess how plankton responds to him wait yeah, i guess even a broken moron can be right once a day he calls patrick a broken moron because he knows Patrick is a broken one of his experiments. And if you still hmm. don't believe me, in the newest episode of season 13, The Goofy Scoopers, we get this scene. This stinks. I wanted to go backstage for an autograph. Plankton was 
hero. Ooh. Yes, he certainly was. And that interesting. is interesting. So it's Plankton much. is behind this. And now here's the end credit scene. Okay, robot invasion. Never mind. Done. Hey, we just passed 500,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. This is honestly a dream come true for me. I mean, I've always wanted to have this many people watching me for um, SpongeBob theories. <laughs> yeah. Like, all immediately unsubscribe and leave me if I stop making these, right? No. Uh, thanks again for definitely watching. Definitely not. I've been your host. No way. SpongeBob guy. That's I not how this see thing you. works. I'll, I'll, I'll right? see you guys. Bye. Yeah, okay, here we go. So it's the mu oh, yeah. if the muse gets revealed, I might have to Please censor it. Give me the silent treatment right now. I swear to God, if you did Because I did originally. I don't want I don't want to show my viewers the muse. Please, no. I don't even want to look at it. I've seen some of it, and it's traumatized me a little. Oh, my God. Victoria, where were you? I was using your bathroom. Why the fuck are you pointing a knife at me? Oh, shit. Uh, okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, you, you cannot be here right oh, now. Oh, where's oh, the I jump scare? Where is she going to, like, go into the ceiling Listen, or something I I and die? Everything to you later. You just, you cannot be in here. Why are you so afraid of me being in your house? Victoria, I promise you, this is not the time. We have to leave right now. Your muse isn't going to eat me. What? You mean the big tentacle monster in my basement? That's a saying. Yeah. Wait. How do you know about that? I have one too. What? Oh, what? What? Oh, what? So that's the end. What? That's a way to end. That's a way to end it. That's actually that. I didn't expect that. And I mean, it makes sense because in the inside of mind video, um, there was like, there was saying that like the muse was also a part of that, like one channel that would like critique Alex Bale's channel essentially. So I think what this is saying, yeah. And that's a thing. That's a thing. Notice how also at the beginning she said something about like, oh, she went to film school, but like she's doing commercials. So essentially, I think what the muse symbolizes as is like something that's like controlling the uh, people essentially to do. I don't know though. I, I guess it will be revealed in the next series, but that's a cliffhanger right there. I was not expecting that. I really like was completely expecting her to just get eaten by the muse but like that's very interesting that makes me think that it's like the muse doesn't want to eat humans why would it do that because it seems to control them so why would it do that and it really begs the question if the whole happy meat farms thing is true is it like another one of those things but like i mean i don't know because like here's the thing I will admit, I will admit, I'm not that big of a fan of the idea of the Happy Meat Farms thing and that it's just some cow. Like, I genuinely do, like, that's the thing, because, like, this ending implies something that I, that I was hoping the Muse was, and I'm hoping this is where it goes with it, is that the Muse isn't some entity that has the ability to, like, copy itself. If that is the case, I, oh, <laughs> I like, oh, I might have, yeah, um, yeah, but like, uh, honestly, if it's not, because I really hope it is just like, this muse is like a metaphor of like, you know, a part of like human psychology. Because I think it would be a good like symbolism and metaphor for that. Because genuinely, it seems like it. I th genuinely, like, it, it seems like, especially with that ending, it seems like that's where it's going with it. And I really hope it goes that route, honestly. Because that concept of it just being like, you know something that's like controlling you and like manipulating you but it's like also kind of a part of you i think is cool and like it's just represented by uh that beast and i'm assuming that it's like you know it could consume you at any moment like something like that but like that's very interesting like yeah that's very interesting that ending i thought that was more of like an expression thing honestly that ending is like really interesting i was not expecting that as for the theory, the theory was good. I liked it. I actually kind of liked how it was more of like a, 
you know, it was basically saying Planton was creating the robot invasion. And it could be true, honestly. There, are, There's evidence to prove it. But genuinely, like, for the story of this, it is, it is insane how, where it's going. And I'm genuinely, like, very interested in it, honestly. I'm extremely interested. Like, just with that ending alone, honestly. But, uh, yeah, anyways, guys, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, and subscribe to my channel. See you next one. Bye!